Well, how do there, chums? I doff my hat to thee. Right, anyway, today's episode, I'm doing a top tips guide to Hunter's Arena Legends. Yeah, because it needs it, because this game has got a real difficulty curve. Yeah, you need proper skill for this. So yeah, just to share you some of my top tips. So you can see there, some guy just went and looted the chest that I went and just killed all the NPCs around. So I'm gonna go kill him. He's got his back turned to me and he's getting some energy. That's something to look for. Look for people that are topping up on their health because it means they're low on health go and interrupt them kill them heck yes yeah do them in completely stove their freaking heads in and if they try to run away like this little cheeky scamp look at him go if you get right behind them you see this blue line try and stay in that blue line it's their slipstream you will catch them up and it gives you a timer of how quickly you're going to catch them up as well and then you can slaughter them heck yes makes it a lot easier awesome yeah and if you chase them for quite a while you're going to get a trophy too so awesome Righto, so next stop, there's a lot of locked characters. However, if you go into the training mode, you can try them out. So rather than use all your hard-earned cash that you managed to loot and grind for for freaking years, test them. See if they're any good first. So there's three characters there that are normally locked. We've got Pigsy, we've got Wukong, and we've also got Sandy. So they're all from The Legend of Monkey, which is awesome. Just Tippy Tarka's missing. I want Tippy Tarka. Yeah, you always want what you don't got, though, don't you? I would have wanted Monkey if he wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Heck yes. And Sandy, for some reason, isn't a bloke anymore. Yeah. But anyhow, there we go. I'm trying out Wukong. I'm trying them out for freaking free. Yeah, don't need to use the currencies. Very nice. But if you go into the actual dual mode, you know, the uh, tag team one, you can't use these characters. They're still locked. So they're only available in training, but at least it gives you a sneak peek and makes you... So you don't go and blitz away all your coins, basically, is what I'm saying, chums. If you want to use hard-earned real monies, yeah, before you part with those greens, see if they're worth it. I mean, Wukong looks awesome. But you see there, he just climbed up a freaking pole and did nothing. So yeah, a couple of his um, special moves aren't all that great. And he's not all that good, to be fair. I would have spent out on him if I didn't test him first, is what I'm saying to you, chums. So yeah, be sure you use that, because... Yeah, you don't want to go and waste all your coinage, all your time, if you don't like the character at the end of it. So out of those three, Sandy is really worth a look. Sandy's awesome. Sandy has got some long-range attacks that do quite a lot of damage. Pigs is not bad, because he does a lot of swirly attacks around him, so he might be good for looting and stuff. So yeah, next up, check your daily quests. Now the daily quests, some of them can be quite easy. I mean, one of those is just enter into free tag matches. Lovely. You don't even have to win them. So you could just leave your control joy, joy, joy pad alone if you want and just die. But yeah, um, I've got strategies for uh, dueling though for where now. you can win. <laughs> There's a couple of characters that are a little bit OP for the uh, tag battles, like her. This is Momo. Momo is an interesting character that does a lot of long range attacks and the attacks are very quick in succession. Now I like using her for looting. So if one of your daily quests is to go out and get as much coin as possible and slaughter as many NPCs as possible, use Momo. Stick to the edge of the map so you're going to see that the round circle comes in, the round red circle. Just stay to the very boundary line of that red circle and just follow it round. Take out all the NPC mods and as, as it moves in, just you move in with it, you know? And make sure that you stick to that sort of boundary line and hopefully a lot of people are going to be running towards the centre. So just keep doing this and harvesting all the NPCs and harvesting all the mobs and picking up all the loot that you can. If you come across a blacksmith or you come across like a little bag icon, so there's a bag icon which is a guy that you can sell stuff to. So if your daily missions is to get a load of coin, sell everything to him that you don't need. If you come across a blacksmith anvil and one of your dailies is to dismantle an item, dismantle the freaking lot. Budget. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you should get those dailies unlocked quite quickly. They're only going to give you a hundred of that super coinage towards unlocking um, unlocked characters or outfits or emotes, whatever you want to spend your cash on. You know, and it doesn't go a long way. This game is a serious grind. If you want to unlock stuff, it really does push you towards using the real money. The microtransactions in this game... Mm, a little bit dodgy, I think, Jums, because to get an unlocked character, I think I'd have to run 200 matches or something crazy to get there at my current rate of play, which is mental. I've done 20 or so, and I'm not even close. So, yeah, it is what it is. I've now got to rank 4, though, which is pretty good. But this is a good method. Sticking to that outer ring is a very good method. You can see that I'm staying right to the boundary area, and I'm not encountering many players, PvP. 
So I can keep going around, looting and looting and looting, and getting my character up to level 10. You want to hit level 10, really, before you start taking on other players, and unlock your special ability if you can as well, Jim, because it's going to help you out massively. If you can connect with one of those super abilities, you're going to take away like a quarter of their health bar. And considering all the end bosses, the world bosses, start to spawn around the centre area as it gets into its smallest sort of confinement and you've got a lot of players there just stay back let them fight the world boss and when you see that they finish the world boss and they go to glug their health then go kill them i know it's a little bit lame and it's a bit cheesy but if you want to get into like the top five that would be my tips for you to hit number one i've never hit number one because yeah i rely on cheese stealth attacks or just sheer freaking fluke and luck otherwise if it's down to skill I'm going to lose. <laughs> yeah, so this is sort of like a little cheaty cheesy guide to this game if you like. You can see here I'm now having to get a lot of health in because I've gone in between the barrier. So now I need to start moving and pressing towards the center. I've already taken out one player at this point. I've already got one death underneath my belt. Now Momo, because she can hit from afar, she's very good at taking out stragglers. So if you see that somebody's quite injured or just come out of a big fight, kill them. <laughs> Assassination! Heck yes. So yeah, she is awesome if you want to place yourself in the top five. For hitting the number one spot, she's probably still good for that too. I just haven't managed to do it myself. But I'm fairly sure you guys, with using these tips, will be able to master it much better than I. But yeah, so they're sort of like my top tips for this game. They really are. So something that the tutorial doesn't tell you, but the controls on the right actually do, is if you use your right hat stick over here, your hat stand or thumb stick, whatever you want to call it, press that in, that gives you the lock-on function, on PlayStation anyway, to lock on to the other characters. Now I am hearing that R2 on PlayStation 4 for some reason doesn't work, so opening chests and things, they just can't do it. But yeah, hopefully they're going to fix that in another patch. But there we go, chums. My biggest tip though, is to use Momo. Momo is an awesome character for starting out, learning the controls, learning the mechanics, and looting. Heck yes, she's fantastic for killing people as well. Awesome, goodbye. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe, and I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. Add Froze Revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.